have multiple kids in the game or do you have one kid in the game? I've got multiple kids in the game and guess what? They both want to play the game. So today's episode is about uh, siblings and how do you manage having siblings, uh, not just in hockey, but have multiple interests and that we want to do multiple things. And as a parent uh, or parents, you have to balance that. So I kind of interrogate Christy and Mike today on this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey, all about siblings in sport or managing siblings as a parent. And it was a fantastic conversation uh, and always before we jump in uh we want to remind you if you like this stuff if you love the episode share it in your team snap share it with your friends uh give us that five star review on apple podcast spotify wherever you listen uh, and make sure to join our uh, a really fast growing community on facebook it's a private facebook group called our kids play hockey a little bit of gatekeeper to make sure we get the right people in there uh, by right people i just mean parents um uh, and, and people who enjoy the game or coach the game but check that out on facebook our kids play hockey and remember all the episodes are on our kids play hockey.com uh, really really appreciate your support uh and all the, the the comments and emails that we get from you that we're doing this the right way thank you for that uh and so without further ado here's another episode for you of our kids play hockey hello hockey friends and families around the world welcome to another edition of our kids play hockey they do every week they do this week they're going to next week and that's what today's episode is all about today we're going to do an episode about what happens when you have siblings in the game together uh, now, this is going to be a good one for me because personally, both my kids are really starting their hockey journey at the same time. And uh, my wife and I, guys, a little story for you, sat down the other night, kind of looked at the schedule for a little bit ahead of when they're they're both playing kind of competitively. My son will be a squirt next year. My daughter will be a mite next year. And we sat back and we were just like, oh, my goodness, this is seven days a week. Right now, I kind of knew that, but I had to have a serious conversation with my wife of like, I want you to really understand what we're about to get into here because this is a we have to schedule we're gonna have to miss games at times in the sense of one of us will have to take one kid one of us will have to take the other kid and uh you know we had a great question in our comments section on our kids play hockey's uh facebook group about what do you do when you have multiple kids in the game so today's episode christy and mike you will be my mentors as you have been every episode thus far about navigating the waters of having multiple kids in the game of hockey as a parent how do you survive that? Maybe we can give some advice to the kids listening to the show, because we know we have a lot of youth athletes that listen to the show about how hard this can be on the parents, because we want to be at every game. We want to be at every practice for the most part, but it can be really hard. So that's today's topic is how do you survive <laughs> youth hockey with multiple kids? Again, let's just quickly remind everybody, because because we all have kids in the game. Christy, uh, you know, your kids, how old they were, how far apart they were. And then, Mike, you do the same. Yeah. Uh... Joey started playing when he was, it was late, seven or eight. And Sophia started right away when she was three. Fortunately, they were both in the same organization. So a lot of their games, when Sophia got to be five and actually started playing competitively at the might level, uh, they were in the same rink, many of them, which was fantastic. You know, one game would be on one end. Sophia would be playing. I can run down the other end and watch Joey play. But as they got older, it gets more complicated. And uh, especially when they get to travel teams, right? high school, that's really hard. Um, fortunately, because Sophia was younger, she didn't have night games. So And Joey's were mostly night in high school. So I was able to make all of his high school games. But when we were out of town with Sophia, because then she started doing a travel team, it was our, we had to just split up. I would right. go obviously with Sophia, help her get dressed and, you know, be around the girls for the girls team. And then my husband would be with Joey with his boy travel team. Um, and you just, it's, it's really hard and it's painful because, you know, you'll call each other, text each other um, and try and do it all. Now, yesterday when we were at my daughter's college hockey game, one of the mom's son's game was going on at the same time. Thanks to Live Barn, <laughs> she was able to watch her daughter's game, college hockey game. She was with us. And on her phone, she had her son's game wow. on Live Barn. So it has gotten easier for parents that you can do that. And Live Barn is everywhere. So subscribe to Live Barn. I would definitely <laughs> suggest that. And then if you can't make it, if you have to do the, the tag team or split up, at least you have an opportunity to watch and know how they did. And she was great because she's also the team mom for her son's team. And she ordered uh, Chipotle ahead of time. 
everything on her phone. So when the boys got done, they had a nice dinner uh, all ready for them. And it was kind of amazing that the phone makes it a lot easier to uh, navigate and to coordinate. So you you parents are lucky you've got technology at your fingertips. <laughs> I was just going to say, now I was the only uh, sibling. I have my older brother who I look up to, but I was the only one who played hockey. And I, I, I didn't think about the technological advances of today. You, you're making a great point because I don't even have Live Barn yet. And you're right. I am going to probably have to subscribe to that tune. I haven't had a need to yet, uh, but the technology there is amazing. And yeah, Mike, let's let's flip to you. How many kids you got? What's the age gap? Where are they at? So Michael and Arthur are six years apart. So I have a 15U and a 10U. So a squirt and a midget. And uh, that, that doesn't you make sense. You can't say that anymore, Mike. You can't right? say it anymore. They changed the I know. Way. So I'll, I'll stick with 15U, 16U <laughs> player, and a high school, high school player, and a youth hockey player. Um, and again, I think Christie's point, it, it, it's, I think it's almost mandatory now when you register for hockey that you register for Live Barn if you have multiple kids in multiple arenas. Uh, it is unbelievable, the technology that allows you, I mean, you, you could get, levels of membership where you just see your own kid play and that's it like right. you don't even have to watch everybody else's kid you just watch your own kids shifts so i think it's um it's pretty wild the different you know the different uh the technology that's out there and to chrissy's point you know having the ability if you're a team mom and, and or team dad and you have multiple kids the fact that you can use you, you know talk about pre-thinking about things you really have to lay things out because you just can't leave to go to your other kid's game and then leave the other you know your team high and dry uh, but it's a challenge, right? That's one thing, you know, I, I think it, it it could be more of a challenge if you bite off more than your family can chew. We've talked about this about, um, you know, when you pick a program, what what are you going to do? You know, how are you going to pick your program based off of your own family needs? And right. sometimes right. you got to sometimes you can't put your kid in the highest level uh, because maybe the highest level is way too much travel. Like I still I mean, I've been in hockey my whole life and I still don't know how people do. Road trips with multiple kids on, on the same weekend. I, it, it just, I look, I know, and I know maybe it's a badge of honor for some people and they think it's great. I, I just don't think there's any need for it. And I think there, it's just so sad to me sometimes when you see all the running around that goes on and there was just, there was just not a, you know, just too much for uh, too soon for your little, for the little kids. I mean, you know, and you want to see your old adult. So the whole idea for us, like in our family is, you know, Arthur's been for years now, been carted around to every rink, whether he likes it or not having to watch his older brother. <laughs> right. Like that's just part of it. Like you bring the, you bring the, you know, the Nintendo switch and you bring the board games and you bring cards and you try to find families that have other kids that have kids in the same age group. And you, and you try to, you know, force on these play dates. Um, but it's, I, uh, you know, it's a hard, it's hard when you have, when you have the one kid that's playing at one level and then you have a kid like in our, in our family, Michael's playing obviously very, you know, competitive travel hockey. And then Arthur's playing um, what I guess you would consider rec hockey, but it's rookie league, you know, one rink, not a lot of travel, not, you know, and it just, and that's just by choice um, really has nothing to do with skill level because anybody could play travel hockey because it's so watered down and filtered. I think anybody could play travel hockey. It's just a matter of what are you choosing to do? Like right. where can you play that's going to allow everyone not to be happy, but to have good balance. And then you got to, you got to throw in here too, is that hockey is not the only thing you do every weekend. Right. So, right. so it's great. It's one, it's, it's like, I it just, this morning, one parent in getting skate sharpened because they're going to Buffalo. The other parents going to Maryland. They're not going to see each other until next Tuesday. And I, I'm like, I guess if you have to do that, great. But my advice is try to avoid it as long as you can. Yeah, you know, it, you're you're making me have a lot of questions here because I'll tell you a few <laughs> things that are happening. Right, like like one is that my son is really getting into it now from a passion standpoint, right? Uh, which is by far the most wonderful thing I think I've experienced in the game, even aside from playing, is watching him find that. But it almost raises the stakes in a weird way. That's probably not the right <laughs> phrase in the sense of oh, now I really want to go. You know, now I really want to watch. And suddenly yeah. my daughter, who I also love and is finding a passion, is in Adams and she wants to go. And it's I'm having to have these conversations uh, with my daughter now 
and, and Mike, you said about balance of, hey, I need to go to my son's, or your brother's practice tonight because it's his first practice with this team. And then I get the, but I want you to come to my practice, to come on the ice. I've had to have that conversation and it's only going to get worse. Uh, as yeah. grow, right. So, uh, and, and again, I want to first game, I think I want to do this in the beginning, give a shout out to all the parents. I know parents who have two goalies and a, and a mite. I know parents who have multiple kids playing. Um, it's a challenge. So, so just shout out to all the parents who have multiple kids in the game because it's, a, it is a way of life. Um, and again, going back to well, that, if you have two, if you have two goalies in your family, that's your fault. That's your fault. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> it, you know, uh, that, what the hell are you sorry. thinking? What are you thinking? I, I know yeah. would say that too. The, the third kid is not a goalie. So the youngest is not a goalie. <laughs> but I, I'll, I'll tell you this is that, um, you know, I remember sitting down with my wife. I said this at the beginning of the episode and saying, wow, we're really going to run into a lot of conflicts here next season if we're not careful. Um, and we really need to think about it. And you know, it's funny because of this show. Uh, again, my son's playing travel hockey. He'll be a, a squirt next year, um, be a goaltender. Um, and my daughter, I'm thinking because of us, is you know, maybe she needs to be in a house league next year, not not a travel league uh, for mites. Again, she doesn't need to be playing in a travel league. I don't I don't think she's quite there yet, in my opinion. Um, I'm learning also from my son being in mites. You know, maybe he should have been in the, in the house league last year, you know what I mean, or the year before. So these are the types of, uh, of balanced conversations, Mike, that you said that we have to have to have um right Christy, I, I wanted it does to go back get to really you. challenging when you have multiple kids on travel teams um, right. and just you just have to face the fact it's not going to be easy it's really challenging you got to do be a better organizer you got to get better at you know making quick meals planning you need a bigger budget because you you're going to be paying for hotel stays for right. multiple kids which adds up Lots of uh, miles on your car, so you make sure you invest in a good vehicle that's uh, not a huge gas guzzler. And um, but on the positive, on the plus side, there's wonderful bonding that goes on when your right. kids share a love for a sport, which was absolutely beautiful. There's six years difference between Joey and Sophia, and I know Sophia is playing hockey because of Joey. Right. That's what got her into it. And you know when. So she was just a baby when we would go watch him play and, you know, uh, strap her up, you know, bundle her up in the rink. And, you know, she'd be just in awe watching her big brother play. And she made friends with the other rink, we call them little rink rats that run around the rink. Um, but what a great bond those two have. I mean, they, they play yeah. their video games together. They're out in the driveway shooting on each other. It's just... Um, it's a it's a great brother sister relationship that uh, I think they got closer because of the sport. Yeah, you know I'm seeing that too in my house. So so again, my son, my firstborn, was just kind of bred into the game. I, again, I I believe he went to his first game when he was four days old, which was believe it or not not my idea. Um, you know, I think my wife just wanted to get out, and, and so he was at a game I was I was working at uh, right away. So he was kind of in the game right away. My daughter, you can see the love is there for it or the interest is there because he plays it. You can see it. Right. Yeah. Um, by the way, he's entering that phase. You guys will love this where he's got the backwards hat on all the time. The hair plucked out to the front and he's got a hockey sweatshirt on every day. He's entering that phase, which is pretty fun for me. I'm like, get dressed. That'll do every day. <laughs> but um, yeah, Christy, I want to stay on this for a minute. Mike, you too, is as a parent. Because I think you're right. That that uh, uh, bond between brothers, sisters, brothers, brothers, sisters, sisters, whatever it is, is really important to cultivate at the younger ages because they don't understand when they get older how important that sibling relationship is going to be. It, oh, yeah. It's impossible to understand it when you're a kid. When when you get older and and you know life moves on, it's it's very important. So how do you help to cultivate that? Or Christy, is it more of a hey, stand off? They're doing it on their own. They do it on their own. Right. Yeah, I didn't really have to do anything. Um, yeah, it just takes takes its course, especially when they have such a an interest and a love for the game. They just, uh, you know, uh, support each other. Uh, right. And Sophia would often, because he was more experienced when she had a bad game, instead of going to me or my father or her father, she would go to Joey because Joey got it, you know, because we right. were not high player so we That's can't cool. possibly understand what she's going through yeah. <laughs> but joey did yeah, yeah so he was always be, there. 
that's going to be fun for me when my, my daughter goes to my son and I'm like, you know, I, I know a little bit about the game too. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, dad, you coached a thousand years ago, right? No, yeah, you know nothing. I know nothing, right? Why don't you ask Mike Bennell? He knows. So Mike, Mike, I'm asking you, tell me now about your kids. Do they naturally kind of have that or do you have to cultivate it a little bit? No, I, that's that's one of the things I, I like is that, well, they they fight like, you know, they're, they actually fight like they're closer in age. So it's like, you know, there's a lot of it's not they're not fighting over like the sticks. Like I see kids like so many kids I work with that have siblings that, you know, they're all close in age. Like they're literally have like built in genetic play dates, like where the kids are beating each other up. Like I, I came from a family of five. So I don't know. I, like I look I, I said I don't even know how my parents did it. Like I don't know how five kids played hockey all within like like two or three age groups from each other i mean right. I, it's it's like you got to trust other families like okay yeah take them i'll see them on sunday i guess you know good luck for the weekend but it you know for when you have siblings that are close um you know i always see it in the rinks when i see these kids walk in like they the way they look at their older sibling girl or boy or whatever there's there's a lot to be said for how that sibling um influences the development of the next one and you and usually i see like the youngest is always like it's either the worst or the best. Like the youngest ones usually just so far ahead because they've gotten they're they're right. getting all that knowledge and all that yeah. handed down to them so much quicker. And you'll even see in tryouts. Like I, I can tell you right now, I, I bet you in like a in a 10 U tryout, like in a score tryout, I could tell you what kids are the siblings of of older kids right away. I mean, just say, oh yeah, that kid has older brother because the way they're, right. the, what they're doing out there or how they're playing or what kind of, you know, what they have when they come into the rink, their knowledge of, 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 of just their surroundings and knowing what locker room to go to. And, you know, just all those little things that you get from just being around your older sibling in any, you know, in any way of life. Right. But right. when in the hockey world, you walk in and the way a kid tapes a stick or the way a kid carries his bag or the type of equipment they have. Like, like my, like I felt so bad for my, like I never got new equipment either, but my, my younger brothers never got anything new. It was like, it was at the verge of falling apart because like, Oh no, no, you're, you're now a 13 inch shin guard. Now you have to wear it. Cause that person's grown and just get passed down, passed down basically until it fell apart, I guess. But I think it's, um, there's definitely, there's definitely a challenge there. If your kids are different levels, like, you know, if one kid is elite and, and there and then a year later another kid has no interest, like you gotta juggle all those things, right? And and I think um, but for a lot of kids, like you look at look at the NHL right now, like the Hughes brothers. I mean, they just keep coming. Like it's just like, okay, well, <laughs> yeah, you know, that this is this is just another kid that was produced another athlete and another kid because the other kid's driving the next one up. Oh, and, right. and the um, NHL's had lots of all the time. Stuff. The suitors, yeah. the the stalls. I mean, there's been a lot of great brother brother uh, groups in the NHL. Also, a lot of great goaltenders were the last born child, uh, just because their older brothers or sisters said, "You get in the net, you're taking the shots," and that's <laughs> that's how goalies get in the net. Learn sometimes, right? But, you know, I think you're absolutely right that it does get passed down, and 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 again, you can see that, like you said, um, on the ice. I think it's it's obvious just the competitive nature. Look at uh, you know, Serena and Venus Williams. I mean, if you guys ever saw that movie about their dad, which was intense to say the least. Um, you know, uh, a lot of what he did with Venus transferred right to Serena and Serena, uh, they're both obviously world class, all time, great tennis players, but she learned a lot from watching her older sister go mm -hmm. through that training. So, yeah, yeah but I think mean, about that in, 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 a, in a microcosm, right? Cause all the other kids had to go too. they all were there. They're all cheerleaders with them. Like, right. so you see that all the time in hockey, you see. Like, and I see it like in families where they have the two kids playing, then the sister comes, she doesn't want to play hockey, has no interest. And, you know, she goes in the corner and plays with dolls. And then you'd see her a year later, like she's kicking everyone's butt because she's right. playing. And she's like, okay, well, you know what? Now I'm going to play. I'm tired of being carted around the rink. Like I want to play. Right. And that's great. Like, <laughs> I love that. I think that's great. So let me go on to my next question here. Um, this is kind of an elephant in the room question. I'm going to ask it pretty broadly. Uh, so nobody needs to be specific, but I know parents deal with this at some point. I'm not talking might in squirt now, but at some point you might get to a, to a place in the game where, Hey, one of my kids is really excelling, really excelling. Maybe he has a future uh, in the collegiate way or a high level. And the other one maybe isn't. Maybe it's just more of a wreck thing for them. How do you divide that time, right? Because that can be really tricky if, you know, you don't want your kids to start thinking, well, mom and dad are playing favorites because brother A has a chance and I'm just doing it for fun. Um, what conversations need to happen? How do you split time? 
you know, I want to get your thoughts on that. Uh, just, just generally, because I, I, I'm not saying it's going to happen with my kids. I'm just saying that I, I know that does happen. I mean, I, I can think of some examples of other parents. It's my kids, because of the difference in age, it really, it didn't really factor in. I mean, Joey was done in high school and Sophia wanted to, I knew she, that she wanted to play college hockey someday. It was, it was pretty much her goal. But, uh, you know, I'm thinking back to other parents who had, you know, competitive uh, siblings and then the other one wasn't so competitive and um, it, they just kind of, made sure that the younger child who might not have be as ambitious about hockey felt special in other ways. Right. Um, you know, I'm thinking of this one example where the kid was really a musical genius, you know, was okay hockey player. So the mom really kind of paid attention to his musical abilities and they made sure to go to all of his concerts and they would brag about him, you know, when he was in the stands with us. Oh, you know, little Joey just had this great concert. They made sure that he felt special and that his talent was just as equal as his big brother who was, who was out there on the ice. So, you know, just uh, don't neglect that kid. <laughs> there are right. ways to make them feel like their talents are important too, even if they're not, you know, look like they're going to be competitive hockey players. I think that's so, great advice, Christy, just yeah. in terms of, you know, making sure that you cultivate multiple points yeah. of interest in your kids. It doesn't have right. to be the same. Right. Yeah, Mike, Mike, how about you? Yeah, it's the same thing. I mean, I, I just finding you got to you just got it's just like any anything we do with our kids. Right. You got if they excelling in something or they like something else or or they or they or they're not as into one thing or the other. We all juggle this. I mean, this is like, OK. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and like somebody like me, I, I'm always very conscious of the fact that you know, I have to be as enthusiastic about guitar as I am about out shooting the puck on your own. Like, yeah. like to me, I'm like, you know, and that's hard for me because I'm like, I don't really care about the guitar, but it, it but it's, but it's, it's one of those things where you always have to be like, okay, well you, you, at the end of the day, you're just a kid. And uh, I, I actually was listening to a podcast the other day on an ex NHL player. And they were talking about how all through high school, he was always the lead in the school play, always the lead in the school play and juggling hockey and his, his, his desire to be this great actor and, 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 you know, and being out there on the, on the stage um, wasn't tough. Like they made it easy for him to do it because they, because the parents were like, Oh, you're great at this. And, and you're great at that. Clearly you're good at this. You're playing, you're going to play pro hockey. So I think we all have to remember that when we're in the stands with kids, it's not, they're not all, they're not hockey players, right? They just happen to the hockey happens to be one of the things they might be good at. Maybe they're great at it, but there's also all these other aspects of their life. And if they have a sibling, maybe that sibling, um, I, I won't name any names, but there's a professional hockey player right now. That's great in his game. And his brother is a great, great wrestler, great wrestler, like a college, like all American wrestler. So, that that person chose to go one way and and the right. and the other kids a great athlete going this way and those parents have to you know they have to send just as many facebook messages out about <laughs> the success of the wrestler as they do the the hockey player and that's right and, uh you know and we and we have to appreciate too as parents in the stands when people have brothers and sisters at the rink you know not to just shun the kid off that's not playing hockey like oh you don't play hockey mm. Oh, that's what yeah. I wanted to dive into because I think it's important that we remember. And again, I'm not, there's, you know, there's so many people listen to the show. The idea is this, is that, you know, if one of the siblings is not great at something, Mike, you just said it's, it's, you want to, you don't want them to feel neglected or that you value the talent over them as a person. And I think that that's why it's so important to cultivate. You can go great at something else. It doesn't have to be this. Right. And I don't I don't love your brother or sister more because they're good at this. They, you know, that that's not how our value system is. And I, I'm, I'm bringing this up. I don't think any parents think that way. I'm thinking about kids. Kids might perceive it that way if we're not careful of, you know, why is dad always going to Johnny's hockey game and he never comes to my recital? Um, and it doesn't mean the dad doesn't love the kid. He just might not be interested, Mike, as you said, in the recital. Um, you know, even my own story, well, or, or it's just, yeah. or it's just what do your lot where you are in lot. Like I coach. So if I'm right. coaching my older That's son, true. I'm going to all his events. Yeah. My wife doesn't coach. So what does she do? She goes to the other events. Like, right. so at some point they're like, well, why don't you ever come to my event? I go, cause mom can't coach. Like I'm the right. one coaching the team. Like, <laughs> right. so, so if I have to, I have to go to these and I guess I don't have to go. I could say, you know what, on this game, I'm not going, I'm going to this event, yeah. but, right. 
you know, to find somebody. I mean, listen, this is not, you know, nobody's dying if I don't show up for a weekend of hockey. So I think it's just a matter of knowing that saying, hey, listen, you got to it's it's really hard because you're committed to a group of other people. And it's 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 hard to communicate that to the other sibling that, yes, I love you just as much, but I'm also committed to this. And again, you can, can you make up with that throughout the course of your 18 years with your kids? I hope so. Right. I hope it's not like, you know, it's, it's not, it's not 17 years. And then, Oh, I, I spent the one year with you and I right. went to your recital. You know what I mean? So it's just a matter of, and then, and then it, and then it all depends on the time of season. Can I do more? You know, you love skiing. Okay. And you're, you don't, so hot and hockey's not as important to you. So we can go skiing more and I can do that with you. Like, like, that's just a matter of, you know, no, being recognizing that, but to your point, Lee, knowing that kids don't, maybe even see that they just remember the one time like right. that. And that could be the biggest time. Like it, it doesn't equal right. out to them. Right. Well, it, look, a, a, it, as a parent, you know, I'm at the, I'm at that point of my parenting journey, been a parent for almost nine years now, where it's like, you start seeing things from your parents' point of view of, Oh, wow. Yeah. Now I get why they did that, <laughs> why they do that. So I, I'm having an awakening and yeah, you know, in the sports, I'm starting to see this too. Right. Um, of how much I enjoy it, but also how stressful it can be. You know, and again, I was going to tell this story too, that, um, you know, I was in choir for a long time. I was in choir for most of my life and through high school. And I remember just so the parents know this transcends hockey. I was a rec league choir guy in the sense of that <laughs> this was not my number one thing. Hockey was always my number one thing, but I really just enjoyed being in the choir. But I remember the, uh, the, the slight judgment, I didn't really care at the time, but the slight judgment of you don't want to pursue this beyond high school. And I was like, no, nah, I just do this for fun. So even in choir, there was this, yeah, this, this lot of pressure kind of things of like, well, yeah. what happens if you don't make chambers? I'm like, I didn't, I, I didn't even do chambers. I was the only junior and senior in my like ninth and 10th grade choir because I didn't care. I just enjoyed doing it, but it, it transcends hockey in a lot of ways. And, and again, my mother always supported that. Uh, my, my father thought it was kind of funny that I was doing that in hockey at the same time, but that, that's supporting the points, Christy, that you and Mike made of just that there's more to life than one thing. I think it's important that, that your kids know that and that they know that you know that and that, you know, at the end of the day, we talk about this all the time is I, I tell my kids, I really just want you to be a good person. I don't care what you do. I don't care how good you are at stuff as long as you're a good person at it. If you don't have that piece of the puzzle, it's really not going to matter anyway, because uh, people that aren't good people don't tend to make it too far. Right. So I think that's important. Um, great answers, by the way, guys, on these questions. It's really helping me out. Here's another one, the tough one. I'm trying to find like the elephant in the room questions. Like I said, what happens when a kid wants one parent over the other? Right. Oh. What happens when they get to that age where it's like, I don't want mom to take me. I don't want dad to take me. I want you to take me. Um, how, and again, I don't know if you guys have ever been through that, but how would you even? compartmentalize that is it a conversation that you need to have is it a no nope, oh, taking you i never time? had that happen uh, I, I, I believe both, you, wanted both of us there <laughs> yeah i believe <laughs> and we just kind of had a lot of down the one of us couldn't um and then we, you know we would switch okay right. you go to joey's game tonight i'm going to go to sophia's tomorrow we would try and balance it as much as we can Boy, I don't know. So you think some kids pick one parent over another? Uh, well, I know they do. I know that would hurt my feelings. <laughs> well, here's the deal. Oh, it, my it, kids! It, I, my kids tell them they like my they like my wife better. Both of them, they, I think. There you go. See that? They, they <laughs> so nobody picks me. There. Nobody. Yeah. I pick. I'd pick you, Mike. Thank you. But they, neither one would pick me. I'm like, wait, wait. What about me? What I'd about me? I'd like, like to go. Yeah. Well, it, look. Here's why I bring it up. Um, <laughs> because I I do know multiple people in that situation. Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you that uh, a lot of times, and again, this is going to sound a little weird, but a lot of times it's it's the parents identifying through the game a little bit differently than I think they think they are in the sense of oh. the kids perceiving it as uh, all this pressure is on me because of you and the way you're doing it. And I don't think the parents are even aware that they're doing it. So mm -hmm. I think that uh, not to answer my own question, but my my thought process is if a kid is saying, I don't want you to take me, I want the other parents to take me that's kind of a red flag that you might have to have a conversation about, Hey, listen, we'll do what you want, but why, what is it that I'm doing? And this is where you yeah, drop the ego. The right. Yeah. I, I think that's the kid trying to mentor you of you're, you're doing something that's making me uncomfortable. And you have to have those conversations. Enough, maybe. Yeah. I, look, I've, I, I have seen that firsthand. So, so it's one of those things of I, the kids will tell you when it's too much. And I think as parents, we got to listen to that. Now with that said, yeah, Christy, I think you're right. I know you're right. It will hurt if a kid says to you, yeah. I don't want you to take me or I don't want you to be at the game. Right. I, I know people who I know kids 
who are adults now who did not want their parents to come to their games at all. They just wanted to be dropped off and left there because they were, they were embarrassed or they felt the pressure. And I remember the parents felt slighted, but the truth is that, uh, you know, once the parents took a step back and realized, Hey, my kid's telling me something, what am, what am I doing that makes them feel that way? That's where the solution started to come. And then slowly but surely it, it resolved itself. But, you know, you can't take that personally to the point of what's wrong with my kid. It's it's what's wrong with me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah and I, I, go, mean, I, 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 I actually I go I go through that all the time because I just I think it's because my kid, my my guys will be like, OK, no, I don't want that taking me that because he doesn't really get into that or he doesn't want to get, you know, he's not into it with me. Like if, he, right. if they if they want my wife to go to some, they know that she's like really into it like that's like her thing like that's what she really like even even as stupid things like, like not stupid things but like even little things like scouting or something like like my wife's not gonna go on a camp out she just won't go she's not gonna do it so the right. kids know that 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 the choice is well mom's not gonna go on a camp out. but if it's a meeting or if it's something that actually has to somebody has to listen and take in information that they have to have for their kids later on like what's the like the like I, there's a great comedian out there he says that you know there's there's there, your the, the the school secretary had to get something like the uh, i don't know what it was like the, the your kids uh blood type or something like that and they had two numbers to call and, and he goes and and the, and the office calls my number first the dad like what the hell is the office even thinking like <laughs> i don't know like i don't know what my kid i don't even know what my kids date like I, I, that's my joke like I, when i do registrations like I always like so the 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 question is right, Chris. You experience this when you walk in and, and you check in your kid for the like the state camps or anything like that. I go, oh, what year? Of, okay, the year of birth, and every dad is like, when were you born? You like what year? <laughs> you born? Like what was your year of birth again? Yeah. And the moms know like year of birth, uh, yeah. last vaccination. Well, I bet the moms last know time, the exact last, second you know, of the birth. Yeah, last time. I, I, yeah, and, la and last and last yeah. time. You know, they, if they yeah. had their tetanus shots, who their doctor is, where the doc like boom, 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 and that's not like my kids are always like. Like don't like, don't ask don't ask him. Like yeah. he doesn't know what he doesn't know. Mike, I, Mike I'll tell pretty, you this. That's actually pretty bad, but and, I, it's it's uh it is what it is. Christy, you could probably confirm this, but if I was on the labor room table, I would have remembered the date. Absolutely. <laughs> like maybe, exactly. maybe not maybe, maybe not the day of birth, but even the date, like the year so you, of birth. Yeah, like, no, I'm say, saying okay, if I was laying date? there. I would remember. That's what right. I'm trying to say. But most, but most hockey the day, parents now the know. minute, the yeah. second. I, I you guys will say are that watching dads... the Super Bowl instead of me giving <laughs> birth. Are you serious? <laughs> This seems like an opportune serious? moment or an opportune moment to tell all the mothers out there. Thank you. Thank you for right. birthing the children. Awesome. No, That's Christy, funny. I'll throw it to you too. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So I, I think, yeah. So be careful. Let get, we'll rewind just a little bit. So be careful of your behavior at a game that may be embarrassing your kid. Cause I, I have seen that where the kid is just shrinking on the ice where the parents have, their air horns and they're, you know, whooping and hollering and yelling at the refs. And, and the kid is just like a shrinking yeah. violet. It's like, please stop, mom and dad. You're really embarrassing me. I don't want either one of you at my games. Well, so check yeah. your behavior to see if maybe that's one of the reasons why they don't want both of you or one of you there. Because it might just be a matter of just toning it down, we you know, are. and being more respectful to other players. You know, if you're calling out, numbers like get number 12 and yeah. you know you know knock them down you know that's just i've seen that horrible behavior so no wonder kid doesn't want you there so check yourself make sure that uh, you're not doing anything that uh causes your kid to say i don't want you there so but mm -hmm. um I, we've always found that the, you know the kids want both of us there for for everything and we wish we could have but uh you can't that's be that's a good place same time that's a great thing yeah. you know that's what you want yeah, yeah. that's the, it, it's painful but it's a good thing you should want your 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 family to be there but uh, yeah. I, I said this in another episode i'm going to say it again one of the telltale signs that you might want to look at as a parent and again don't don't read into this too much is what happens after your kid makes a mistake where do they look right mm. or how do they look I, you know i i have seen kids at every age group when they make a mistake they look to their parent in the stands Oof. And it's yeah. not a good look. It's a, oh no, my dad or mom is watching that. That's That can be disturbing. And again, at different ages, it means different things. Again, don't read too yeah. much into it. I've also seen kids, you know, last, you guys will have this last game. Uh, one of Logan's teammates jumped in front of a shot and Logan looked at me and pointed at the kid with like, did you just see that? And then he went back on the ice, um, kind of back into the game. That, that was a good look, right? It was a yeah. you know happy look. But, um, you know, 
especially when you get to the higher levels. If a kid makes a mistake, if they're looking at you worried about judgment, ha you have to have a conversation with them that that's not how I value uh, our relationship. And, you know, if you make a mistake, you should talk to your coach, you know, uh, unless it's an endearing type of thing of they're looking mm -hmm. at you for comfort. All right. Again, a lot of different parts of that. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up, like maybe we can end on this one is just, you know, I always look to my wife's family. My wife's one of five children. Um, they're all somewhat close in age as you go down from the oldest to the youngest. And I was always amazed by the support that they gave each other. So at some points, mm -hmm. uh, Christy talked about this, the, the older brothers would actually end up taking the younger kids to the games. If the parents couldn't be there or they were working, it was a real family unit. And what I took away from that, again, in my family, it was just my brother and I, and we were five and a half years apart. So we just never were close in age um, in terms of athletic school or anything. But what I learned from my wife's family is, wow, they really turned this into a, you know, we do this as a family, right? That we support each other as a family. And I, I've always wanted to recreate that in my own uh, car, in my own house that, you know, hey, we support each other in whatever it is that we're doing, whether it's sports, music, school, uh, anything we're pursuing. So I think that when I look at the impending future of my two kids playing, I'm also trying to look at it with that. How can I create this environment of, hey, we're going to support each other. So that means sometimes dad will take Logan. Sometimes mom will take Alina. Sometimes we'll switch, but we're going to do it together with all the stress, with all the travel. We're doing this together. Um, I think that's how I want to approach it. So the question is, am I crazy <laughs> Is that going to get blown up in two years when we're doing different camps and different sports and different things? Or do you think that that's, that that's a healthy way to approach it? Very healthy way to approach it and, and make a point. It's very easy for mom to take, you know, the girl to the girl's right. game and dad to take the guy, the boy to the boy's game, but make sure you make an effort to switch. Um, yeah, even if it may seem, Oh, it's so much more comfortable for me to be with the guys. It's really important that, that dad show up and, you know, and be that support for your daughter as well. It's really important that dads get involved. And I love at the college hockey level, the dads all show up at the games um, and not just the moms. And it's just, it's, it's just a great thing. And when you hear about their journeys, they were right there. Same thing with my husband, the entire way they were there supporting them from, you know, little girls all the way to the college level. So yeah, make sure you be a part of that. Yeah, Much, I think that yeah. I think that divide and conquer is is uh you know and then and then swap and switch and yeah you know, just being a part of both like it's just like like laying out the calendar and say okay what's that's what's more important but what is more like you know how can we make this where it's um you know if I go to this game I know I can come home and I'll have dinner ready because it's it's an extra time for this and if I'm cooking then then I'll take the you know, the one kid to this one and one kid to that one. If you you have something you have to do, but you know, I I know like me and my wife, we always try to look and say, okay, wow, if we if we're gonna go here, like 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 if I'm take if Michael's got a travel hockey game somewhere and we find out that Arthur has nothing, right? And we bring he's coming along with us, she'll be like, oh, you know, he has to go to the game an hour earlier, so we're gonna find like a local zoo or a museum or an you know something where he can go for that full hour. And then go do that and with her, yeah. right? Or it wouldn't, it, it should be, I guess I should swap with me, but if I'm coaching, I can't do it. But it's just like, okay, he's dropped off. He's getting ready for his game. But now I got, you know, an hour and a half to kill. Let's go do something. Let's go do something that, that is, you know, that's, that's great for all of us. And then, right. you know, right. and the same thing, the same thing, if he has to go to something, we kind of, you know, it, it, it does, it takes managing your weekend and your time. Yeah. yeah I was yeah. just going to say. And that's that, a good point because yeah. I, I can recall when Sophia was little and, there were um, other parents who had kids her age and we would be out of town with Joey's team. We would find something fun for the little kids to do and we would take them as a group, you know, to entertain them like a zoo or some sort of, a, you yeah. know, museum or something fun for them so that right. they felt like it was their trip too. Yeah, you can't just go to the bar. <laughs> exactly. What? I was gonna... That would make it so easy, what? right? Well, I think that's a good point, guys. Is that it, I'm very conscious, especially when when my daughter wasn't playing. I remember like, hey, let's just I'm just going to take you out to lunch today or I'm going to take you out to yeah. like just find little things yeah. of just me and her where it's like, right. hey, I want, I want you to know I'm here for you, too. And, and I think that's cultivated itself. Well, I also want to remind everybody, uh, maybe you didn't know this, uh, Colleen Howe, who is the wife to Gordy Howe and also a manager, famously had a gigantic uh, like whiteboard or whatever chalkboard calendar 
in their house. Uh, and all the house talk about this calendar that she created that had everyone's schedule and how they did it and that how she managed everything. And she became, I think she was the first female uh, agent in NHL history at one point. This is Colleen Howe, who's also you know, Mrs. Hockey, just as important as Mr. Hockey. Right. Um, so, you, and she had none of this technology. <laughs> no, but, but somebody has to manage that, that, that event, like the right. every weekend's an event and somebody has got to manage that or else nobody gets managed. Right. So it's just right. a matter of saying, okay, well, where are you going? Where are you now? It's so easy to, you know, you look at Google maps, say I could get here to here. And if I add this stop here, we can go here. You can go shopping here. We can get this in over here. And then we all meet back together at this central location. So it's like, it's, it's, uh, you know, so if you have, listen, I guess if you have one or two kids, you're pretty lucky. If you have uh, five that are five, playing, then yeah. then good luck. Yeah. The, 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 when, I, when I first saw my wife's four siblings, I was like, wow, this is a lot all the time. Um, you know, just key takeaways for me, guys. Again, uh, obviously, schedule, schedule, schedule. You have to have that sit down time. You have to figure it out as parents and, and families together. Uh, I think one I wrote here is quality time, not equal time. Yeah. Right. It's about the quality of the time and making sure that you, mm -hmm. your kids know that, hey, I, I am here for you, too. If Even if it looks like I'm at yeah. the hockey rink all the time uh, and then communicate. Right. I, I think a lot. And this, this is parent to parent, parent to kid, kid to parent. Um, you can't be afraid to have those conversations. Don't you know, I, I'm a big mental health proponent. We should not just always assume our kids are OK. All right. And I think it's really important. And parents, I know you know this listening, that you have that conversation once in a while. Everything going good? You feeling all right? And really have the conversation. Because uh, here's the deal. If you're 16 years old. It's not all right. <laughs> it's just, all right. It is all right from our point of view. You don't have real problems or whatever as a parent, but it's 16. Nothing was all right at 16 years old. Nothing was all right. Everything was crazy. So uh, no. just some takeaways there. But yeah, yeah I want, Christy, Mike, thanks so much. Because I, again, I learned so much from this. I can't tell you how much of this I apply on my own journey. It's like, I'm getting a, a free master's in hockey parenting from you two. <laughs> so thank you for, for, you know, in the university of, of ben Benelli and Cassiano Burns, we'll think of a better name than that. Uh, but any final thoughts before we move on is this was a great little show today. Yeah, just, um, yeah, just we'll help guide you. You know, we've been through it and we've made mistakes and you can learn from our mistakes. Um, so stay with us and uh, we've got more great topics ahead for everybody. There we go. Yeah, no, and I'll, I'll take a lot of these myself and re reset and uh, you know kind of remember that. Oh yeah, this weekend I probably probably should mm. spend more time with the other. What's the other kid's name again? Uh, <laughs> oh, the know, one with so, the other birthday. So, yeah. The other, the other, the the, the one that the, the one that does stuff I don't like. Um, I think it's just a matter of just you know, knowing <laughs> knowing that you know that 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 juggling. It's a juggling act, and we we you know, and if your kids don't play sports, it's probably a juggling act with something else. Whatever right. whatever they're. Interest, let, thank God, if your kids have interest in anything, this is a great thing. Use it, you know, get them out there, get them have being interested in whatever it is. If they want to build, you know, buildings out of uh, toothpicks and just make it, make it, uh, you know, make it a good one. Maybe an engineer. Yeah. And, and look, I'll fi uh, finally, I'll end this, excuse me, by saying a few things. One is I will continue to make my mistakes in real time and share it with this audience, hopefully as a guide, as a coach in this time and era of, of what to do, what not to do, at least from my own experience. And I, I want to echo what Mike said that, you know, the the skills, the relationships, the family, all of that trumps the game in the long term, no matter how long your children play, right? You got to remember, you're teaching your kids. I This is, I'm speaking to myself too. I'm teaching them how to parent in the future by the way I parent now, whether I realize that or not, right? So the hockey journey is just a big part of that. But I always think about that, that this has uh, reverberations or, or, or ripples as you get into the future with college and work. And Mike, you said it. If your kid's passionate about anything, cultivate the passion and the work ethic. That's your opportunity. That's your in to teach them how to work hard. You love this. If you love this, you'll work hard at it. So that could be hockey, choir, toothpick building, buildings, becoming the next engineer, whatever it is. Yeah. So. Yep. Uh, wonderful episode, my friends. Thank you for joining us again. If you're listening to this uh, and you love it and you find value, share it. Share it with a friend that needs it. Share it with your team. Uh, make sure to give us those reviews on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen. It really helps us out. Also, we've had a lot of people joining our Facebook group uh, lately. It's Our Kids Play Hockey. It is a protected group. You can't just jump in. You have to ask permission to be in there. So a little exclusive there. But Our Kids Play Hockey on Facebook. And of course, all episodes, all conversations available on OurKidsPlayHockey.com along with the uh, little deals we put together for you guys. So that's going to do it for this episode. Everybody have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy your games. Enjoy your week. We'll see you next time on Our Kids Play Hockey. Take care, everybody.
We hope you enjoyed this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. Make sure to like and subscribe right now if you found value wherever you're listening, whether it's a podcast network, a social media network, or our website, ourkidsplayhockey.com. Also, make sure to check out our children's book, When Hockey Stops, at whenhockeystops.com. It's a book that helps children deal with adversity in the game and in life. We're very proud of it. But thanks so much for listening to this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey, and we'll see you on the next episode.